Welcome everyone. Um, today we have another knowledge exchange. It's called Community Radio, Diversified Business Models. Uh, thank you for joining. I will first tell a little bit about the background of, it, of this initiative. Um, it's an exchange which is part of a series of exchanges between different media houses. And the goal is to have two media houses uh, exchange more intimate knowledge on specific aspects of their business model. And to allow other media to benefit as well, uh, we have recorded this and it's, it will be published on Free Press Unlimited's website. Um, this initiative is funded by UNESCO and it's carried out by Free Press Unlimited. So um, for those who are present and listening in today, I'm supported by my co-host Isabel O'Farrell. So if you have any technical difficulties, you can just put them in the chat. And you can also put a, a question or uh, in the chat or in the Q&A function, and we will try to answer them at the end of this exchange. So today uh, we discuss community radio. We have two very interesting community radio with us here, um, represented by Taban Usoyabon, uh, the manager of Riverside Radio in South Africa and Carol Taylor, she's the administrator of Roots FM in Jamaica. And we will try to focus on different income streams such as grant funding, local council airtime and musical packages. So it's a lot, uh, let's see how far we can get. I will now give the floor to Taban and Carol. Um, maybe Taban, you can start with introducing Riverside. Well, thank you very much, uh, Evelyn. My name is Tabang Kusoya Bone. I am the station manager at Radio Riverside. Uh, radio Riverside is a community radio station in a small community of Uppington. Uppington is in the Northern Cape province in South Africa. And Radio Riverside broadcast in four languages. Um, the predominant language is Afrikaans, which accounts for 60%, English 20%, Isikosa 15%, and Setswana 5%. Those are the languages that we speak. Radio Riverside broadcast uh, to a potential listenership of 105,000. And our weekly cumulated listenership, according to the last research, was uh, 92,000, which is just over 90% of the expected uh, listenership that we can get in Uppington. Thank you very much. Thanks, Devan. Uh, Carol, hi. hi. Hi, I'm Carol Taylor, station administrator at Roots 96.1 FM located in Kingston, Jamaica. Kingston, the capital of the island, Jamaica. We are located in the Caribbean island. Roots 96.1 FM is a community-based radio station. We celebrate our 23rd year in existence, which I'm told makes us one of the oldest, if not the oldest, community-based radio station within the Caribbean. We are owned and operated by the Mustard Seed Community. Mustard Seed Community is a, um, the largest organization in Jamaica that takes care of persons with special needs, AKA we call them persons with disability. Roots broadcast, our broadcast license allow us to broadcast in the capital city, Kingston, the next city, which is called St. Catherine and also St. Andrew. However, with modern technology, I'm sure Taban can just type in Roots 96.1 FM and get us in South Africa. So we're all over. Um, we broadcast for 24 hours. Our programs varied from straight music to educational and um, music educational. Our disc jocks, our presenters are what we call from our community because the need when Mustard, when Roots FM was established, we felt that there was a need to have the voice of persons from inner city community. And hence we did training and started the radio station. Also with a great gift from UNESCO 23 years ago, 
we did get a grant and a gift from the UNESCO and that started roots. We are almost in the same age group. Uh, um, Riverside is uh, 22, turning 23 next year. Ah, okay. When next year? In October. We okay, officially so we are still older. We are in May. <laughs> we are in May. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our daily program here at Roots, we have a variety of programs, even though there are some that are continuous, like most mornings, I think Mondays, Sundays to Friday, we start with a gospel program at 6 a.m. We start with gospel and then we move on. Um, our, our program slots varies. You can have a one hour show or you might have a four hour show for us, right? We broadcast only in one language, which is English. There is presenters who will use what we call the Jamaican dialogue, Patwa. For example, um, where are you? That's the Queen's English, which is what we speak. But our Jamaican dialogue, I can say, where you there? Which would mean, where are you? Right? So we do intertwine our Jamaican dialogue with our native English language. Um, anything? Talk to me. So, uh, Carol, I was uh, wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the music packages that you offer. Um, because I understood you do this for upcoming artists. It's one of the income streams that you have. Yeah. Um, maybe you could say a little bit more because you both have very diversified income models, but this is one of the income streams that Riverside has not yet explored. Okay, one of the things we have noticed that you have quite a number of young artists, and when I say young, not necessarily in age, but who wants to produce music, who think they're singers and stuff like that, and they don't know how to go about doing it. So what we created, again, it, this is in the Jamaican dollar. It's called the Moss Bus Musical Package. And as it says, Moss, M-U-S-B-U-S, Moss Bus. It gives the artists an opportunity to have us listen to their music first and foremost, because they have to be listened and then approved. To listen to their music, we somewhat have a critique because a lot of person will say, oh, I can sing. And I, I, I personally can sing. When I'm in my show and the water is cold, I am the greatest singer around the world. However, you have to know how to compose and put together your music, right? And so we listen to the music based on what might, what the music to the words might be. We will speak with the artist and let them know, okay, this doesn't work with this, or this will work with this. From there, if the music, if they may, if there a need for corrections, they will go back and correct it. If when it's when we decide that it's deemed airworthy, then they're given three, three opportunity. And this is also a way for them to invest in themselves because when we critique, they get to learn, okay, you don't do this, you don't do that. Because for example, we don't take CDs with handwritten stuff. Your CD must be properly labeled. The production house, the, 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 each and every tracks, and stuff like that. So we try to ensure that, you know, we're, we're, we're guiding these artists to present themselves or how to present their music. When the music is now deemed for airplay, you get 10 play with one track over a two weeks period. Then we have a must bus double up. This is where you get two tracks to be aired over the same two weeks period. Then we have the Must Bus Supreme, which gives you one track and an interview. And all of these are carry an expense. Uh, <clears throat> please tell me, uh, Ma'am Taylor, you say um, the critic session happens, um, I, I, I take it it happens in the production and not on air? 
uh, is there a fee that is payable at this stage? Yes, it is. There's no, we don't charge to critique or to give advice. We don't. Okay. What we charge is is the for the package for the air for them to get them on air. Oh, okay. Right. So, so the 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 song once you have approved it and it's according to the quality mm -hmm. uh, that the, the stage approves, then you can the artist can then pay to be playlisted on air. Right. What happens if you like the song but the artist does not pay? Do you still playlist the song? No, we don't. You don't. No. So all the music you playlist will have to be a package no, no. of some sort. No, we, th this is a special package that is carved out in each day for young artists. So it, it's come, it comes on at about noon our time and it's called the Moscow musical package. So it's only in that slot it will be played. Oh. Right? Only in that slot. So it's introduced as part of the most Bus musical package. And uh, this jock who's going to be playing it will say, you know, if you want to be a part of this, you need to come down, bring your music, talk to us and stuff like that. And it's also logged on our daily log. So that at the end of each year, when we have to present our music sheets to the relevant authority, they will know that this song was played at this time and this is the artist which also in return start having them earning royalty, right? And this is why we encourage them to invest because one of the things is that a lot of disc jocks will be approached, brethren, um, can you play my music, right? Nothing is wrong with that. However, when they present the, the disc jock, it don't necessarily mean that the, he will play it or he will play it whenever he feels that. But once you're a part of the musical package, you are you have a choice between 12 in the noon or four in the afternoon. And then on weekends, we give extra what we call brata. Right? So, so, so uh, the artist who, who buys one song for the next two weeks, it, it will only be that song or is that song being packaged in a feature of some sort? Well, for the individual artist, it will be, if he wants one track to be played, it will only be his one track being played. If we have three artists in that package, you will have those three artists songs being played. Uh, uh, yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. And the station doesn't that is is still paying the royalties for playing that song. Well, we have to pay royalty for all the songs that we play. Play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. So at the end of each month, we are uh, in Jamaica. We have what we call the Jamaica Musical Association. So they will send us an invoice in which we have to pay to have the music play, and then we have. J JCAP, Jamaica Composers and Musical Association, and they also get paid. Yeah. And then I, in return, I, we'll pay the artists. I think this is a fantastic these, idea. These it's, artists have to be registered. Sure. It's a, like a two prong. If you're not registered with these organizations, they don't know who you are. They might hear about you, but they can't give you royalty if you're not registered. Yes, absolutely. It, it, it starts with the artist knowing that you need to do these things. One of the things, when I speak with these artists, I say to them, you have to invest in yourself. That's where it starts. Your appearance, how you produce your music, you know, how you go about doing your business. It's important because, I mean, if you're not appearing like you're serious or you're not, you don't know anything about the business, People will take advantage of you. So you need to start learning. You need to check your appearance, how you present your music. Don't just come and say, here's a thumb drive. Invest in yourself and make sure that your stuff are well labeled. You know, you have a WhatsApp or, you know, your numbers are easily read and everything. 
it's a part of growth for me with the artist. Yeah. I, I think this is a fantastic way of creating a partnership with artists. Mm -hmm. In the South African context, we are struggling to create this type of partnership, or we have not tried, because we have been stuck at a point where, because community radio is struggling to pay royalties to the Southern African Music Rights Organization, um, uh, the relationship has been that tough that uh, we haven't really explored alternative ways of generating income that would be able to assist us maybe even in paying or covering some of the costs of, of, of royalties. I think it could go a long way in, in, in assisting us in that front. Yeah, well, you see, we, we as a community-based radio station, there are and we're not island-wide in the traditional radio sense. We have to find ways in to cover some of our expense, pay, you know, pay our presenters. And we pay for the airtime. We pay to use the 96.1. We have to pay a yearly to the Broadcasting Commission of Jamaica to use that radio frequency. So we have to, in return, find ways and means. And while we do play songs that aren't, you know, the artists really don't invest in themselves. We have to find ways of mean of covering our expense. And I don't know of any artist who does not want to hear his music on the air. Sure. Yeah. All right. It's not the, the, the like you, I mean, even though Bob Marley's dead, it's not like a Bob Marley, but you have young upcoming artists. I'm sure you might have heard about Buji Banton, Sean Paul, and those are oh, some of our, they had to start somewhere to get where they are, right? Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, true. so we, we, we created that. And I mean, even with the interview, because now for those who want to do the interview, they get to tell who they are, persons get to see them because everything, since the pandemic, everything now has to be, our interviews are on Zoom, we're, posted on our Facebook, YouTube, everything is out there in social media. And, and how, has, how has the demand been for that show? Do you find that there's a lot of traffic artists requesting uh, for an opportunity to buy? Or are you sometimes skipping days where you are unable to get uh, a time sold? It, 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 it depends. Like now, because it's the festive season, we're preparing for Christmas. A lot, you won't find a lot of artists doing new music now, right? And since we just opened up somewhat since the pandemic, there's still the if in them because no, no one is allowed to visit the radio station now. Sure. Not doing Zoom. So yes, there's a lull, but by the time February, which was considered Black History Month, there are times when we, we, we have to extend the slots that we have designated for this musical package. Sure, sure. Right, and then what some do, they don't just want for two weeks, they go into a month. Or some, some has gone as far as three months. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's very interesting, but and I was hoping we could also, sorry for interrupting, I was hoping we could also look into this local council airtime because I know this is something that Carol was interested in from your side, Taban, because uh, Riverside, as I understood it, uh, has some airtime for local councils. Uh, and they also pay for that visibility, basically. How do you get them to pay? <laughs> yeah. I would love to know that. Yeah, so maybe. No, okay. For us here in Jamaica, we have what we call the Jamaican Information Services, which is a government organization. And we have to actually give them airtime for government broadcasts. We, we don't have that, luckily. Um, so what, what we do, we, we, we go into a partnership with the local municipality or the local council. 
where we say to them that there are certain things that you need to communicate about service delivery, about what it is that you do, about maybe your shortcomings so that the community is aware where the services would be going, where the budgets would be going, and they are able to participate um, in, 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 in their government. Because if you run a government without community participation, it's, it's, it's not really a democratic process. So as a radio station, we create that platform, which enhances the democratic process for people to be able to participate. But at the same time, um, the municipality or the local council pays for that, for that service. What, what we do, we talk to the, the, the council, we design a, a calendar for them to say, these are the programs that are available. These are the topics that uh, you wish to put on air. So this would be the days when those topics would be featured. We have a presenter who would then be asking certain questions, allowing calls or WhatsApps to come through in infusing social media into the program so that people that are able to uh, comment through Facebook or otherwise, uh, their comments could be read on air and, and the municipality would be able to, uh, to, to pay. Because this type of shows are paid for, we make it uh, known to the listeners that this is a paid for broadcast. Um, and we, we also make it clear to the municipality that uh, we, it does not mean that we will not be able to raise any other questions that are not part of the funded programs. So if we need to uh, call them to a current affairs show, we are still at liberty to do so where the community might be unhappy about something and the municipality must come and respond, we call them there. But this would be a dedicated campaign where the local council educates the people about the work they are doing about the bylaws or any other thing that the local municipality would be doing. Wow, well, um, I'm gonna, well, I don't think that probably would work here for us. However, um, it would be an idea. I know we have gone to a lot of the council meetings and broadcast you know, or highlight some of what is happening, but I am not sure if there's anything in the, the budget for media, but it, it, it's something else. So um, for your radio station, are you guys on 24 seven, 24 hours each day? Yes, we are. And what, what we realize is that many councils in South Africa actually don't do that in their community radio stations. So they need a bit of convincing. Uh, you, you need to meet with the uh, head of communications or people that are responsible for communication so that you show them the benefit. The important thing is for the municipality to realize that they actually need the show. And if they need the show, it needs to be paid for because it's a platform uh, that must generate income for the radio station because the radio station has got operational costs that they need to cover. I, I totally agree with that. You know, we have we all have needs, and you know, to cover our just basic expenses. How many presenters do you have in your radio station? We have the total. Our total staff is thirty-five. Of the 35, six is part-time, uh, part-time meaning uh, they are working elsewhere and they are only coming once a week to the radio station and the rest is the full-time staff. Uh, about 18 of them are presenters. Well, I think we have about 25 persons, five persons are staff. All the others come in at various times to present their programs, and that's it. 
Yeah. It's almost on, uh, we are 18, you are 20. It's almost the same average. Um, I think the, the, the trick is you have to get uh, some of your shows to be at an average of three hours in order for you to reduce cost because it does not help having a lot of uh, or a big team that you cannot afford to pay salaries or to pay a form of a stipend. Yeah, well, um, it's five hour salary and the rest are, um, I think, 10 stipend and then the rest are volunteers. But um, depending on the program, because what you're talking about, we have like three each week. And it, again, it's in Jamaican dialogue, make we talk. So it's a come on, let's talk. And those deals with issues of government, of the country concern. I mean, like almost every week we're talking about the COVID, right? Yeah. However, information from the ministry, and even if they are coming to talk, they're not going to pay for that. But this, they, I, I gather they consider this, this is important. This is a national issue. Why do I pay for it? Yeah, with, with us, they do. Um, not, not in all instances, but if you package a campaign for them where the message become more coordinated, more, uh, you, you can develop a campaign and, uh, and it is consistent, it comes at a certain time, it's promoted, it, it has got all these elements of delivering a good radio program rather than them coming once off, it's better for them to pay for a dedicated slot, which would come and educate the community about something. And I really don't understand why many of the communicators don't see it this way. That if you need to inculcate a certain message, you need to do it in a form of a campaign and you need to uh, be able to dedicate some form of resources to pay for that campaign. I definitely agree. How many radio stations do you have? Community radio stations in South Africa. It's over, well, it's over 200. Uh, okay. there, there are states that say it's over 300, um, but most of those radio stations would be found in the urban areas. Rural areas are still struggling with uh, getting more voices, but I think it's understandable because in order for you to have a radio station, you need to make sure that it can be sustained. And if, if it can't be sustained in a small uh, area, in a real deep rural area, maybe the advice would be for the one that is closest to the town to be able to broaden their signal distribution to reach the areas which cannot self-sustain. So are you in a rural or urban? It's a semi-rural, we've got a small town. Um, it's 105,000 people staying in the area. Um, but it's quite, I think uh, agriculture is the main uh, economic driver, uh, um, which then gives birth to other forms of economic activities in the town. Uh, but indeed, it's able to uh, facilitate some form of sustainability for the radio station. I mean, okay. I, 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 I see. Yeah. Uh, no, because if you're semi-urban, then yeah, definitely uh, your council would need to broadcast from, you know, your radio station to ensure that persons were, we're in the capital. And I mean, it's just a jostle every day to get, pers I mean, we have, there's so many choices really, but, um, you, you mentioned that you have several languages. When you're doing, are you seeking sponsorship and grants? 
how do you go about trying to decide who and what? I, I mean, do you have your program sponsored? Some, some programs are sponsored. And whenever we create those type of funded, grant funded programs, we try to use the predominant language, which is Africans. The reality of our town is that most, even those that speak English can speak Africans. Those that speak East Closa can speak Africans. And those that speak Sichuana can speak Africans. So the predominant language uh, that can be widely understood in the area is the Africans language. And most of the time, when we do programs that have got that huge benefit for the community, we do them in the widely understood uh, language of Africans. So what kind of programs do you get sponsorships for? For instance, now um, we are, so some of this, the programs, we create them as we see the need. Recently, we created, there's a language that is about to uh, die. There's only one person in our area that can speak the language and the grandmother has then taught the daughter this language. So there's at least two people, one can speak it fluently and one can't. So in order for us to now create a project around this, and, and encourage the communities to learn the language. We then form a partnership with people that fund language development. And, and they pay a fee for us to be able to do, to develop a campaign around it. So those are the type of things that we are able to do. We, it can be a, a, a content around COVID that, that we feel that uh, there is a health program that needs to be um, um, developed so we, we can create content around that. We could speak to a doctor who is having his own practice. And whenever we, uh, we do the program, it could, it could then carry a billboard that says this program is brought to you by this practice, the name okay. of the practice. And then at the end of the program, then we say this program was brought to you by this. Somewhere in the middle, you say- Yeah, uh, you give them intro process. and outro, and you know. Yes. Taglines and stuff, okay. You, yeah. I think that's, basically that's what we do too. You know, we have special programs and we, we target the persons who directly it would involve to seek sponsorship or grant, you know, but um, how, how is it, um, what about your equipment and stuff? How do you guys go about upgrading? Would you say you have the latest equipment? Yes, we do. In fact, we are currently building a state-of-the-art studio uh, with production and on air. So it will be the third studio and all our three studios are interlinked to be able to co-present. Co so you will be in one town uh, and be able to co-present with another person in another town. Um, so we, are, we have linked our studio in that way. Um, luckily in South Africa, we've got an agency which was created by the government to fund community radio stations. It's called the Media wow. Development and Diversity Agency. They are, their responsibility is to ensure that there is diversity of media and community radio is the core of, of that development. So uh, they do fund community radio infrastructure like studios. And whenever they do, they, there is a certain standard that right. they require so that you know there's no one studio which is funded by them that does not have certain equipment. I think I remember reading the bio that was sent. Um, and I think I might not be as clear as it was written that like your presenters would go out and get um, broadcast sponsors. 
I'm not sure if it's like from an outside broadcast or the client wants an outside broadcast. I, I remember reading something like that. How does yeah. that work? So, so this is how it works. We call them the ind independent contractors. Okay. Uh, so, so this is when we realize that our presenters would never be able to generate sufficient, they will never be, we will never be able to pay them uh, market competitive salaries because of where we are. Mm -hmm. And, and we ended up losing a lot of talent, either going to government or going to other uh, commercial broadcasters or the, uh, the, the public broadcaster. Because of that, uh, we then said, let us have an opportunity where a presenter uh, can go to a bank and say to the bank, I'm doing this type of a show, can you fund it? Um, and we give them all the training around how to do radio sales. And once they then clinch that deal, then there is 50% which gets to be kept by the radio station and the 50% which gets to be kept by this uh, presenter. And this presenter now is no longer our employee, but is an independent contractor. They have to sort out all their resources to ensure that the program is, is what it should be. Okay. The radio station is, is, is solely now making income from uh, advertising. So they do not have any uh, income rights on the advertising that we make on the show. There can be features that can be developed on the show. Those features can be sold as well at a percentage that we give to the independent uh, contractor. Okay. Do, do you have in your area, do, do you have an agency that funds you for equipment and what type of equipments do you, how, how are your studios? Well, no, we do not have an agency that funds us. <laughs> and um, where the equipments are concerned, I know just a little and I was hoping that my IT person would have been here to at least speak on that, but we're not 100% state of the art. However, our studio is as functional as any one that you would find here in yeah. the world, I guess. There's always need for more stuff because now that we are totally like internet and the Zoom and everything, you realize that, okay, where we wouldn't have three mics, we probably going to need another set of mics you know, the webcams and all of that. But we, we are just as high tech as any commercial radio station here in Jamaica. Yeah. We have two and, studios. We have yeah. one studio where all the equipments are for the presenter or the engineer, the council board, all the computers and everything, all the equipment. And then we have another studio where we do the interviews and stuff like that. That's one that hasn't been used for quite a while because no one is allowed in. We don't do in-house interviews and stuff like that. So we just basically have presenters. Yeah. All our presenters have to be computer savvy because everything is stacked on the computer, whether it be commercial, the promos, everything. And they program that they use to load the music or whatever. All our presenters have to present a playlist of their whatever event, the program that they are presenting and the music, because that too has to be presented to the government at the end of each year. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and how do you find your upgrades then? I beg your pardon? How do you find your upgrades, your studio upgrades? Well, we normally have fundraisers. We have, but before COVID, we usually have at least three or four designated fundraisers 
for studio equipment. Yeah. And also, we do have go funds. Sure. Okay. I, th I think one of one of the commercial uh, commercials have not been that strong in in South Africa in the past. It is beginning to pick up now, um, and and the criticism that we used to get in the past was was that community radio cannot provide proof of broadcasts. Um, there was no independent monitoring reports that could be submitted or some form of verification that the advert that was paid for has indeed been played. I don't know if you have you, you, you are having that same challenge and, and how are you overcoming that challenge? Are you having a certain soft because this is critical this is video, in the video ISIS. you're in the video okay yes we could have got some of those same problems however oh, we have a daily log okay which everything is stated out from 6 a.m until midnight every day each commercial is set Right, let me back up. When um, a client calls or requests, a, and we have agreed on the commercial, they normally ask for a schedule. Sure. So I have to do up a schedule. Then it's set on the log. And on each daily log, the presenter who works within that shift has to sign it. And at the end of that, now I, I go- Like to, manually signing in? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay they manually have to sign it. If there's any doubt, everything that plays in the studio is recorded. I then go and ask for the recording. Yeah. Right? So if a commercial say it was to be played between six and 6.30, I'll have the IT persons give me that block and I'll listen. Now, if it's not played, a presenter is going to be given a warning letter. I know I have to apologize to my client and make good. So we do from not, it's not the norm because persons know, because again, you're told this is where the money comes from. Don't mess it up. Sure. Sure. And if you mess it up, if you're stipend, you're not going to be stipend. You're going to give out, get a warning letter. Three strikes, you're out. Yeah, it's it's an it's an it's an important element of income generation because if you don't do it right, mm -hmm. um, businesses will go away and you will lose money. If, right. if people cannot trust you to to keep to your promise to play the advert at the time that you said you will play it, mm -hmm. they they will lose trust in you and they will go away and you will lose money. Yeah, totally agree and. For that reason, we have we also have three designated persons who are to listen to the radio in blocks. Yeah. So one person between six and say six p.m. Another between six p.m. and midnight and stuff. So you know they keep on top of everything. Yeah. 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 No. Here at, at Riverside, we have been using a, 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 a software, a playout software that was assisting us to track and trace whether the advert has been played or to send it as proof to, to the client that indeed the advert has been played. Um, and the, the, the software then gives you the time, the date. Right. Uh, I think I know there's one in there because I use it. I mean, I'm not yeah. a presenter, but. I ensure that I'm able to use most, if not all the stuff in there. And yeah, one of them, that whatever it's called, it tells you the time, the date, and da, 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 da. So even if I'm asking, I can just go in and just look it up and say, okay, there it is, it was played. Evelyn, we are radio people, we can talk forever and uh, you might not be able to fit in <laughs> everything you wanted to fit in, yeah. 
I think we already discussed a lot, so I don't have any objections here. Um, what what kind of questions? Because I think we still have around ten minutes if you want. Uh, I don't think we'll have questions today. So, um, do you have any more questions for each other or any specific topics? Because what I find found very interesting about what you told me, uh, Taban, for example, is how um, it's so important to have these strong radio personalities and how it is also, at least that's how I understood it, that your presenters are, are have a specific reputation or a specific personality that people also associate with, which also is very important in your sponsored or commercial collaborations. And mm -hmm. I think it's something similar for Roots FM, right? Or Definitely. Definitely. Because again, as I said, each morning, Mondays to Sundays to Friday, we have gospel between 6 a.m. and 9. Now, um, if someone is advertising a bookstore, a gospel, that's the slot they're going to want to go in. And based on how that presenter presents that program, that might just be the most popular gospel slot. Right. And I know for here at Roots, here in Jamaica, gospel sells. There is this need for the word and gospel sells. Yeah. For us at Roots, our most profitable airtime programs are gospel. We have gospel in the morning and some at nights. On Sundays, the best day. Right, and we're not a gospel radio station, but most of our income comes from gospel programs. Right, the demand has even grown with the COVID, because because of most churches were closed or had been closed, persons needed a way to get to their congregant, and what better way? You stay home and listen to the radio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I I I take it uh, there's a big gospel following um, around your area? Not just around our area, because we do have a lot of international listeners. The diaspora yeah. of Canada, the United States, England. We recently um, added a little five-minute program called Africa Set. And the person who is hosting it is from Kenya. So he tapped into his Kenyanian, if there's such a word, persons, and they were they're listening. Right. And you know Jamaica is the capital of reggae, the reggae music. Yes. Yes. Right. So now they know exactly where to go and listen to reggae music. And we, we don't only play reggae music. Yeah. Right. Then the with with that, I are you then sometimes using that type of feedback that says we like gospel to maybe create a gospel event where you will fundraise and make money from the event. Definitely. That was one of our fundraising events. Every year we would have a gospel concert. Yeah. And from that, that's where we would buy like new air, air conditioned units and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, e events are a big part of our work as well. Um, we have the community we have the community awards, Radio Riverside of Rebecca's Community Awards, where okay. we award people in our community that are doing excellent work, and we notice their work, or they get to be not nominated by the community members. And when you do that, you build partnership with funders that can then fund that project. Um, you then uh, can host the awards and still be able to make money from the awards that are able to assist you with your operational costs. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think we might have something that because um, one of our calendar event here in Jamaica is the National Heroes our National Heroes Day. 
but we have broken it down smaller to community leaders. And, you know, we do, when we have our anniversary gospel concert, we would award our community leaders, but that's not a sponsored event. Yeah. Okay. But um, oh. what are your programs like? We have a mix. We have a mix um, from uh, gospel to jazz to different genres of music, different styles of from magazine documentary. We do dramas as well. Um, okay. Most of our dramas are funded. So we will okay. create drama around environment and we will approach a funder who is interested in, in environmental preservation for them to fund that type of a project. And sometimes we can create a mix of things so that we are able to you know, uh, have better impact in the community, but also having many things also assist us uh, in, in, in creating a bigger budget. Uh, for the funding. Okay, that's great. Um, here in Jamaica, we do have a school that teaches everything in media. It's called Caramac. Do you, or uh, have you guys thought about having like students coming to do their, what we call it practicum, you know, it's a part of their learning. Do you, um, it, does your radio station allow students to come and it's really volunteer, with a small stipend during their course of learning? What, what we do, we have created an internal academy where we train uh, people in radio. Uh, so what, what we have in, in South Africa, we have the MICT CETA, which is a CETA responsible for media, uh, media training, technology training and others. So what, 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 what we do, we would then take people on training to develop their skills. We've just concluded a project now where we were taking 20 people on training and then the CETA would then fund um, in South African rents, it would be 35,000 rent per lena, which translates to 700,000 rents. Um, uh, for the for the entire project for a period of three months where you take them through training around uh, script development radio productions those type of things you put them on air you develop their skills and this is how you find talent we also do have an annual program every june june in south africa it's youth month so we take young people who are interested in, in radio, in media studies, and we take them through a two week training. And then on the 16th of June, which is Youth Day, we hand over the reins to them so that they manage the radio station on that day. They do, they are responsible for, for, for presenting all the shows for that day. Um, and it's been an excellent project that has assisted us to build a database of people that we can always go and tap from so that whenever a presenter leaves, we know there is this foundation, this, this uh, talent that we can go to. Okay. Well, I know for young adults here, there's always someone who wants to go on radio, but then the training has to be there before. Because yeah. what goes on air, we are responsible for it. And we are guided by certain rules and regulations. Are, are there funders for those? Will you have those type of funders in Jamaica for training and development? UNESCO. We just love the UNESCO. <laughs> Those would be the projects, really. Yeah. Would be the project, yeah. you know, persons who would, you know, yeah. ask us to do that. And then yeah. we would probably pull from the pool of persons, you know, find out from the persons in the community if they're yes. interested, you know, and yeah. what are yeah. they interested in? Because one of the things we know now is that a lot of 
they just want to be these jocks. They're not into the talk. They want to, want to play the music and do that thing. And that's not what we're about. Because our yeah. must be educate, inform, and train. Meaningful development. That, that's, that's what we do also. That's why our training, the radio station now, it's at the last leg of getting the radio, uh, getting uh, our academy accredited. But currently, we are working with an accredited training provider so that these people that we are taking through training, they get a qualification at the end of the, the training. Okay. Yeah. The, um, well, one of our pet program is called Extraordinary Ability. And as the name suggests, it's, it speaks of what our foundation is here at Roots, Mustard Seed. The mustard seed takes care of the most, the most vulnerable persons within our society. The mustard yeah. not only in Jamaica, but Zimbabwe and Nicaragua. Okay. Republic, yeah, we have a mustard seed there that takes care of You're referring to the South African, the, the Southern African Zimbabwe. Don't do that, please. That's a South Africa. Leave it there, please. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, well, is, is there only one Zimbabwe? <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> well, I hear about Nicaragua, I hear about Zimbabwe. Come on, it's way over there. <laughs> Brothers from um, Kenya and stuff, we, they, they, they're in, be, being trained for to be priests and stuff like that. Yeah. But for us, we have like poetry program, we have a mag magazine type programs, news, sports, current affairs, most naturally music. Do you, do you have any poetry, pro you know, do you have female disc jobs? I, I, I'm almost certain I heard one the other day when I was listening. We have one as well. Uh, I think uh, the... This, the style here has been that most of the DJs uh, were males and it, it was almost like blocking women from entering. But I think that the successful women DJs are now becoming an inspiration to the other women who are beginning to want to enter the industry. Uh, but it's just it's at a slow pace. It's at a slow pace. Okay. Well, what would be your biggest income stream? Well, commercials, the musical part. Well, airtime first and foremost, because we sell our airtime to programs, as I say, the churches and stuff like that. Sure. Yeah, commercials, and commercial, not necessarily on the government commercials, but business sector, and then the musical package. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Very interesting. I, I have the feeling that you are only getting started, but I have to start rounding up. No, that's is it, okay. <laughs> is it an idea? <laughs> is it an idea that I provide you with instructions on email so that you can always reach out to each other if you have definitely it? because I'm now listening to uh, Riverside. <laughs> I try to listen, but unless it's in English and I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right, don't know what they're saying. <laughs> so, okay, so saying. I will do that so you can just continue the conversation anytime you would like. Yeah. I would like to thank you both very, very much. I think it was very interesting and we covered a lot. Um, so thank you for your time.